Now, it's three decades since an English judge ruled that Scientology is not a religion but a dangerous cult. Yet today, the highest court in the land ruled that it is a religion and that therefore a couple can marry in its so-called chapel. The organization, founded by a science fiction writer who is said to have decided that the way to get seriously rich is to start a religion, is delighted, as doubtless are his disciples, St. Tom Cruise and the Right Reverend John Travolta. Jim Reed reports. For a very new faith, Scientology has some quite traditional ideas about a relationship. But at its new London headquarters, the church might have its own chapel, its own ministers, but it has no wedding licence. Scientologists have been fighting to use this place for marriages for some time. Back in 1970, the Court of Appeal ruled that Scientology services were not an official act of worship because they don't involve a recognised God. That clause has been used by officials to stop this place, or church as Scientologists would describe it, being used for official wedding ceremonies. Today that changed. The Supreme Court ruled Louise Hodkin can marry her Scientologist boyfriend in that chapel, bringing England and Wales in line with the law in Scotland. The couple now plan to tie the knot in the spring after an extended engagement. It's actually very similar to most Western uh, marriage ceremonies, basically. You know, we have a congregation, there's an aisle, she'll stand in a white dress, and we just have our own religious service. But again, it's quite um, normal, you might say. There's still I do's and all that yeah. sort of thing in it. Uh, and in terms of walking up the aisle and this kind of stuff, is that all the same? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bridesmaids, everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm beginning with the question whether Scientology is a religion. Giving his judgment, Lord Tulson said the definition of worship as veneration of a supreme being was out of date and any attempt to stop Scientologists marrying in a chapel would amount to religious discrimination. That's good news for the church after a year of bad publicity linked to the split of poster boy Tom Cruise and his wife Katie Holmes. Critics of Scientology have long argued the religion is nothing more than a cult based on the work of a science fiction writer. There will be plenty of people, and you know there will be, who think, look, these two people have been completely brainwashed, that anyone who believes the human race started 75 million years ago when a spaceship, a spaceship came to Earth, these people cannot be treated seriously, and the fact they're allowed to be married <laughs> undermines the whole idea of marriage. I mean, what, what's your reaction to those people? <laughs> I personally don't believe that the human race was started when a spaceship came yes. to 75 yeah. million years ago. To not be honest. It's that. actually not. No. no. <laughs> we believe that man is a spirit, and uh, that's the simplicity of what Scientology is. The soul, in most religions, we consider that as you. Yeah. So I believe I am myself a spirit, and that's really that's actually the essence of Scientology. The church says it now has 8,600 missions in 165 different countries, with 13 centres in the UK, including its headquarters in East Grinstead. The last census, though, shows only 2,418 people identify themselves as Scientologists in England and Wales. Scientology is treated quite differently in different countries. In America, for example, fairly recently it got tax exempt status a few years ago. So it's treated as a religion, doesn't pay taxes. Um, in France and Germany, the situation is quite different. In Germany, if you're a Scientologist, you can't uh, work for either the state government or local government. You can't even be a school teacher. In Britain, the Supreme Court's decision today. I think it's still up in the air what the repercussions of this will be. How will that affect tax? How will this affect rates? How will it affect all sorts of things? Will the Charity Commission uh, can make a different decision about how Scientology is to be treated? It, I mean, this case was about us getting married. Obviously, the church, I had to get the church's support and they've helped us, which is fantastic. But it's always been about the fact we wanted to get married in our church. But you've been supported by the church. You've been backed by the church through this whole process. How much is, uh, have they been telling you what to do, how to proceed? It's, it's not been the church. No, it's I mean, our lawyers. Yeah. Yeah, they've been the ones who have proceeded, you know, proceeded with all the legal stuff. Yeah. You've got some quite high-powered lawyers. How are they being paid for? <laughs> well, 
the church is supporting us in our case. Financially? By paying for your lawyers? Yeah. And by paying for quite expensive PR people to bring you in here today? <laughs> well, we wanted help because obviously we, when we got the PR man came out of the High Court, it was like, we didn't know what to do. We're just yeah. normal people. It's like... <laughs> Ministers are now worried the ruling will open the door to greater recognition of Scientology. With talk of the organisation being able to claw back millions in tax breaks, this might just be one wedding, but the significance could be far greater than that. Well, we asked a representative of the uh, Church of Scientology to join us to discuss today's court ruling, but uh, nobody was available. I am joined, though, from Denver by Mark Headley, who became involved in the Church of Scientology when he was seven years old. He spent 15 years working at their international headquarters in California before turning away from the organization and campaigning publicly against it. Uh, Mark Headley, when you were in the Scientologist, did you consider it a religion? Well, it's funny that you ask that, because in 1953, L. Ron Hubbard himself wrote in a book that he did called Creation of Human Ability, he wrote that Scientology is not a psychotherapy nor a religion. And throughout the years that I worked there, I worked there for 15 years at the international headquarters, it was, it was always a, a public relations campaign to represent Scientology as a religion so that uh, there would be, they could play the persecution card or they could get a break on the taxes. And even L. Ron Hubbard himself in 1962, he wrote, it is entirely a matter for accountants and solicitors in regards to them being called a religion um, as opposed to a business or a clinic. When you were a Scientologist, did you consider it to be a religious experience or a way of belief? Now, from my experience in, in not only being a member of Scientology when I was a child, to then becoming a, mem uh, a member of the elite organization called the Sea Org, which ran Scientology internationally, um, it really comes off as a business. Uh, and it, it's a, uh, a money-making operation. Even the even the individual Scientology centers around the world, they're referred to, at, at, from the headquarters of Scientology, they're referred to as organizations. We never refer to them as churches. Okay, I think you've alluded to this a little bit already. Why is it that the Scientologists themselves want to have their, whatever it is, belief system, their organization, considered as a religion? I, I think so it is so that they can... Uh, they can get around the, the, the laws and the taxation that a normal business or a money-making operation would have to adhere to. As soon as, you, as soon as you go to the religion card, Baba Booey, you're now not paying taxes, you're not, uh, you're not having to follow the same rules as other organizations, you're, you're, you're basically getting privileges and you're getting benefits that any other money-making operation would not get. What's the money for? Well, that's a really good question. I know when I was there in the uh, early 2000s, they built a multi-million dollar mansion for L. Ron Hubbard for him to live in when he returned from um, wherever he went off to in 1986 when he, when he passed away. Um, they built, they spent tens of millions of dollars on a a new building and uh, new living quarters for the leader of the current leader of Scientology, David Miscavige. Um, he does spend a lot of money on motorcycles and motorhomes and luxury limousines uh, for himself. Um, I'm not sure, besides uh, lavish new buildings that are sitting empty around the world, I'm not sure what they would be spending the money on um, Can I ask you besides, you know, personal things. Can I ask you very briefly one question? What did you think when you were a Scientologist? What did you think would happen to you when you died? Well, they tell you that when you die, you come back again. And, and even for the C organization members, we had to sign one billion year contracts so that when we died in this lifetime, we'd still be on the hook to come back and work for them the next okay. lifetime. So. So that's actually, that's actually what they, Scientologists commonly believe, that they'll come back again. 
Thank you.